When I hear text the video, my first question is, why? Because as a filmmaker and animator, when I want to render an image, I have something very specific in my head. So specific, I want to use my hands to render it out and make what's in my head my version to the best I can. With text the video, I'm typing it but how do I know that the computer is going to interpret my vision exactly how I'm seeing it? There's been a lot of hubbub with Sora from OpenAI, and I've been looking at it extensively on the website, and that's gotten me go down the rabbit hole of text to video. And there are some impressive things about it, but it's not gonna replace filmmaking. And honestly, would you want it to? Look at some of these shots. What is impressive about it? The fact that the computer made it? Is the actual shot itself something you care about? Or is the fact that you know it's AI generated the most impressive part about it? And some of these clips, when you look closer at them, you can really see some disturbing errors, even the ones that they champion. OpenAI is pointing out weaknesses and putting time into testing it, but also OpenAI is a billion dollar company that has the resources to do this while other one instigating legislation pushing forward at what cost, I ask. Only large companies with market dominations often can afford to plow ahead even in the climate where there is legal uncertainty. So does this mean that OpenAI is basically too big to control? Yes, at the moment OpenAI is too big to control because they are in a position where they have the technology and the scale to go ahead and the resources to manage legal proceedings and legal action if it comes its way. And on top of that, if and when governments will start introducing regulation, they will also have the resources to be able to take on that regulation and adapt. Edgar Wright was interviewing Martin Scorsese and they got to talking about AI and filmmaking. And Scorsese brought up a wonderful point. I didn't want to be the last line of defense. And, <laughs> um, because I just, I, I honestly think it's thrown back now at all you in the sense that, um, and, I, and I really mean this, that I don't know where cinema is going to go. If it's, why does it have to be the same as it was for the past 90, 100 years? It doesn't. Um, do we prefer the ones from the 90, for the past 90 years? I do, but I'm old. Younger people are going to see the world around them. You guys are going to see it in a different way. You're going to see it fragmented. You're going to see it, I don't know, from you come from another country, you see it in one long take. What does that take? What does a shot mean now? What does one shot mean? I don't know anymore. I don't think it means anything. What does a shot mean anymore? Do you think about if the shot is low angle and Robocop looking up to him about how that makes you feel? Do you care? Would you rather just play RoboCop the game? Does it matter that RoboCop came from Paul Verhoeven? Do you care about the source? Do you just care about the image? Do you think about Andres Bazan's photography theory at all? Of course not. You, you, you think about the image, it's what matters to you. It's the F is for fake Orson Welles situation. All that matters is your connection to the screen. Do you really care about how the image got there? I think you should. I think that when you have more care of people on it, we get wonderful films. And I don't know if I believe in Jeffrey Kratzenberg's future. Uh, I don't know of an industry that will be more impacted uh, than any aspect of uh, media entertainment and creation. I think AI as a creative tool, think of that as a a new form, of a, a new paintbrush or a new camera um, uh, has so much opportunity around it. I think that it, um, on the one hand, it will be disruptive and commoditize things that are very inaccessible for artists and storytellers today. You know, well, what kind good, of things? Well, the good old days when, you know, I, I made an animated movie. It took 500 artists five <laughs> years to make a world-class animated movie. I think it won't take 10% of right. that, that you can have access to all of this knowledge. It's your ability to prompt it 
that actually produces a result. And so prompting is in fact going to be a creative commodity and across many, many, many different aspects of storytelling. I understand the productivity of being able to do more and Kratzenberg likes to point out that it's like a new paintbrush, but by having less artists, does that make it a better movie? Weren't those people doing useful things in the first point? Couldn't they be reutilized in new ways? And it's not only OpenAI, Google, Pika, Runway. There are multiple companies out there that are also working on models. As I was scrolling Imogen, all I could think about was this is just like scrolling TikTok on a web browser. The thing that's most impressive to me is style transfer with text to video, with being able to take existing video and replacing it in the new style. There are some things that could be useful, making B-roll, uh, extending footages, fixing a bump in the camera, making video assets. But again, what is the joy in having something rendered out but not making it in the process? Is that what you wanted? Or is that what you think you want? How are you going for what you want? Or are you just accepting what the software is rendering out? Is that what you wanted? Oh, 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 oh. How could I have done this? It doesn't make any sense. Look at it. It has no life to it at all. Oh, my nephew, say cheese. Good direction, Marty. Here, this one, interesting. It's far too nostalgic. Does text to video truly save you time or compromise? Is that truly your vision? Don't we already have text to video with the movie making process going from screenplay to theatrical distribution? And is the best part of the movie how impressive the graphics are? Or is the content and story of the piece? And also, does the reverse technology exist? Can AI analyze video to create text? So the thing that was most impressive about reading this is that these models create static and then they, well, at least in OpenAI Sora's case, they go from static and keep reiterating over the image to create what we're seeing. So I find that fascinating that they're able to take static and be able to refine it, which makes me wonder if all static has some video hiding in it. If it's like a QR code for some other thing. But also, it's only capable of rendering out things that we have references for. It can't imagine something that it doesn't have a reference for. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys. How's the water? And the two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what the hell is water? I recently went on a campaign of using all my image rendering software available to me to try and make this joke from Blender, images as planes, to see what would happen with AI rendering it out. And I was never satisfied with any of the options. They may have been technically impressive, but none of them captured what was in my mind. None of them were me. They were just these weird things. Weaknesses. The current model has weaknesses. It may struggle with accurately simulating the physics of a complex scene. It may not understand specific instances of cause and effect. For example, a person might take a bite out of a cookie, but afterwards, the cookie may not have a bite mark. The model may also confuse spatial details of a prompt, for example, mixing up right and left. It may struggle with precise descriptions of events that take place over time, like following a specific camera trajectory. Also, look at this clip of the old lady here. It's really weird what some of the people in the background are doing. And look at the cake. Look at that candle with the double wick flame. There's like weird things that it does. And if you're not looking specifically, you may not notice them. Like this cat with the extra limb that comes out of it. 
Toy Story 4 had some of the most impressive technology available for it, but yet Toy Story 1 is the movie people prefer. Why is that? It's because the technology doesn't make the movie, it's the people in the story that make the movie, that make the moment, that make the event. People are always going to think of Toy Story 1 in 1995 before Toy Story 4. It may be more graphically impressive, but Toy Story has more of the stickiness, more of something meaning that lasts with you after the effect. Something to offer the audience. What does text to video offer? It's another tool in the toolbox, but I hope we don't let it replace the ingenuity and the capabilities of human creativity and artistry. We might have humans that use it to generate ideas, but I don't think I'd be excited about an AI TV show or an AI movie. It's just another marketing term. It feels like 2009 with 3D Avatar. Okay, another gimmick. What's next, smell vision <laughs> You see it now in movies of Nolan's really champion IMAX, and now more movies are saying IMAX. That's the big upsell in cinema technology, the biggest screen. But like no one talks about that movies are already 3D. We already have text to video with the movie making process. Text to video AI models may save time, but they will never replace human storytelling and human stories. I don't want an AI story. I want to know what you think. I want to know how you see the world. I don't really care about how the computer sees it. Frankly, the computer sees it weird, and I don't like it. Like I said, shivers down my spine. I, I wonder what we're working on and if we should be truly working on it. If a computer could generate convincing motion, what does that mean for the future? What future are we building if artificial general intelligence can generate convincing video in any style and be able to work off existing video to create and generate from that? What implications does that mean? Some of these shots are impressive, but also they have weird details like, what is that yellow sign in this historical gold rush footage? Some of the ones that they point out the weaknesses are, are really disturbing. And if it affects me later, like when I see motion that I know is not supposed to happen in real life, it gives me a shudder down my spine of like some eldritch of knowledge I'm not supposed to obtain, something I'm not supposed to see. I worry if there are patterns the human brain is not meant to witness and what text to video could potentially unlock. We see in a particular mod, we've evolved over time to do this. These computers are replicating us, but are they seeing in the same matter? What else is in the noise? I have loads of questions, and I don't think AI extends out. I think it's just a different style. And personally, it's a style I don't really find that appeasing. <laughs> I personally like seeing what artists can do. Jeffrey Katzenberg thinks that there's going to be prompters out there, that that's going to be the job, is writing text into a box. Does that sound like the job that you want to do? Of working it sounds like you're working for the software as opposed to you telling the software what to do text to video saves time yes i could see it being a useful case for making a background shot or for making assets but i still think as filmmakers you're going to be very specific on what you want so i see it as useful for special effects and enhancing things that are already shot but for AI generating images, I think there's a long way to go. Still, why would you want an AI generated movie? Wouldn't you prefer something that humans made? Isn't the novelty of the AI movie the fact that it's AI? 
and that it's probably not going to be good? Don't you want stories that are good? Do you want work that's not well refined? Is that what's intriguing? Is it the graphics that you care about? Or is it the story? Take this shot, for example. Really long prompt in there, right? Who gives a shit? The lights in its eyes look super weird. The ground changing multicolors, super odd. The little fairies movement, super weird. What are these hands? This shot's super weird. W who cares? This one also is super not impressive with the giant cloud man over space. I understand that it's well rendered, but the lightning doesn't really act like lightning with how it's holding here in the frame. So nice try, but why? <laughs> I will say the best example I saw with a long prompt was the octopus with the crab. Upon looking at this again in DaVinci, in editing, it does not hold up. Look closer at the tentacles and the crab legs, especially at the end there. <laughs> also, I think the flock of paper airplanes shot, um, while it's rendered a little soft, I think it's pretty cool. So there's a novelty to text the video, and there's some utility, but it's not going to replace filmmaking anytime soon and once again why would you want it to what what is the point in having the computer render out these things they're not specific like if you want something seriously go for it seriously oh god you take it take myself to the word is seriously i guess but you know what the damn thing is you got to be serious about making a picture why rely on open AI or a text to video company to do an imitation of what you're thinking about. Is that what you're thinking about? What do you want to see? And what are you willing to do to make it? Also, of all the things to name your text to video model, why go for the Kingdom Hearts protagonist? That's the ultimate question. I've used Dolly and DeepArt.io to make various AI images. And while they may be graphically impressive, I don't feel as much for them for any of the things I took the time to make in Procreate or Photoshop or draw by hand. I, there's something different. Even with writing notes by hand than by typing them, Notes that I write with my hand stick with me more than those that I type. They can be the same message, but there's something more sticky. They have more of a mental image that sticks in my mind, and they're easier to recall for me personally. I remember the feeling of writing it down and having to focus and look at the image. When you have no insight into the process of making it, you don't feel as much of a connection. It doesn't have the same quality and extension. It's just another part. And again, I feel like it's a compromise. Is that what you wanted? Is that exactly what you were imagining? Or is that just one variation? Are you settling? Could you put it into a style transfer? When would you be satisfied? what would make your hearts content and isn't it better to go on the journey to try and make what's in your mind disney's 2019 aladdin may have made more money at the box office unless you account for inflation but when i think aladdin i think 1992 those images stick out more in my head not just because of nostalgia because of the image. Look how much brighter and clearer this is than Aladdin 2019. It gets lost in the photorealistic darkness. There is more character, more attention in the 1992 version than the 2019 version. Would Jeffrey Katzenberg's Kung Fu Panda benefit from AI? That was made by humans. 
Poe feels like Jack Black in a Kung Fu Panda costume. Would it be better with AI with having less of a human touch? Why do you want less of a human touch? Just to save time in the bottom line? And let's not forget, we live in an age where studios, especially places like Warner Brothers, are deleting completely rendered movies to save tax incentives as opposed to releasing them for audiences. It is more about the business than the art. Does every story need to be a box office success? Can't they just be excellent stories? Release the movie, Warner Brothers. Let the people see Coyote vs. Acme. Is the point of art business? Or is the point of art human creativity? Is the point of how impressive the image is? Or how the image makes you feel? What it means to you? What matters? What does a shot mean anymore? And do you even care? I did a commercial for American Express where I'm complaining about what I shot on a kid's birthday party. Yeah, that is, that's what I do. My AD saw me last week. He said, I love the commercial. He said, it's like being back at the monitor. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> what? I've lost the narrative thread. If there's one thing I want to leave you with after watching all this video is to encourage you to use your resources to create. Maybe AI can help you make assets for it. But at the end of the day, don't you think the best stories come from a place of human creativity? AI may extend, but it will never replicate the spark. What does your vision look like? And once again, what are you willing to do to create it?